Well, today was a big day for Orioles shortstop Richie Martin, who got to tour the Negro League Museum. His grandfather, Walter Bancy Thomas, played in the Negro Leagues. And in 1945, he was teammates with Jackie Robinson on the Kansas City Monarchs. And Bob Kendrick, the president of the Negro League Museum, acted as the host for the players. Welcome to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. Again, I'm Bob Kendrick. I'm president here for the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. And I always get excited any time that we have an opportunity to take young major league ball players through this museum. And the thing that we talk about every time we're together, the one thing that you share with the players of the Negro Leagues, love of the game. Love the game. You play this game because you love it. But as I also share with my young Major League athletes, you will never see a greater example of love of the game than you do when you walk through those doors. You see, they had to love it in order to endure the things that they had to endure. Baltimore Orioles to be here today, and particularly for Richie, who is part of the legacy of the Negro Leagues, is very special. It is very special. We really appreciate you all coming out. And, and, and Richie, we've got something very special that we want to uh, present to you. And Robinson plays here in 1945. At the end of the 45 season, signed his contract to play in the Dodgers organization. He would spend the 46th season in Montreal in the Dodgers farm system. And then on April 15, 1947, make that monumental walk on the field as a member of the Brooklyn Dodgers, forever changing the game of baseball, but more importantly, forever changing this country. Yeah, you can divide the American 20th century into two pieces, before Jackie and after Jackie. He had that kind of impact in terms of sparking social change in this country. And here's the great Goose Tatum. Most people remember Goose Tatum as a great basketball player. And he was a great basketball player, played for the Harlem Globetrotters, enshrined in the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield. But Goose Tatum was a slick fielding first baseman for the Indianapolis Clowns. And guys, the man had the longest arms I've ever seen <laughs> on a human being. This old Buck's case. We dedicated this to Buck for his 90th birthday. He did not want us to do anything special for him because he didn't want the museum to appear like it was about him. We defied him on this one occasion and did this case anyway. In the rear of the case is Buck's Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian honor that anyone can receive in this country. That was bestowed posthumously to Buck in December of 2006, shortly after he had passed away in October of 2006 by President George W. Bush. I was very fortunate to be there at the White House to see Buck's brother Warren accept his Presidential Medal of Freedom. The O'Neill family allowed the medal to come home, where now the world gets to enjoy it. It has to survive so that we don't lose this precious piece of baseball and Americana, so that our children will have an opportunity to come here and learn something that none of us were privy to during our own formal educations, but not only learn it for its educational value, but its very much inspirational nature. Because really, if you walk away from this story with nothing other than this, what the Negro Leagues teaches us is very simple. In this great country of ours, if you dare to dream and you believe in yourself, you can do or be anything you want to be. You see, they dare to dream of playing baseball. I expected it to be somewhat like uh, Cooperstown, and, and it kind of was. Uh, uh, as layout is concerned, um, but I think Bob did a really good job of putting his his uh, own twist and, and personality into it. You know, that guy he was awesome. Man. He's the whole the whole tour. He was, you know it's nothing was scripted. It was all uh, very intimate, and uh, you could tell that he has a lot of passion in, in what he he does at the museum. Uh, my, my dad, growing up, always um, wanted me to, you know, stay educated on, on, you know, how far we've come in in terms of baseball and in our uh, in African Americans. So to see that firsthand and to be able to carry that legacy on is is pretty important to me. Yeah, you know, 
I think it's, it's our responsibility, um, not just African Americans, but all of baseball to learn, you know, what, what we've come from. And you know, it's not all, all negative, it's, it's positive too. And I think it's uh, important for us to never lose that history uh, so we don't make the same mistakes over it, obviously. And, you know, it's just, you know, playing together and, and being the baseball community, never let that separation happen again. And there is Richie pointing to a photo of his grandfather. And there's his grandfather, Walter Banshee Thomas, who was Richie's mother, Deborah's father. And what a story. And what a day for Richie to go back and celebrate not only the history of the game, but the history in his family. Right. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, really emotional, obviously, for uh, Richie Martin. But uh, what a presentation. Obviously, uh, Richie talked about the passion by Bob Kendrick. Uh, Telling that, you know, Richie and all the other players that were there talking about the uh, Hall of Fame and, and the impact it's obviously had on everybody. And, and what a great lesson. And uh, Richie Martin carrying it to heart and taking it out there, I think, every day he plays. And on that 1945 Kansas City Monarchs team, we mentioned Jackie Robinson. Satchel Page was in that rotation. A couple of eventual big-time players in Major League Baseball. So nice day for Richie Martin. Glad he got to celebrate.